my name is Terry Harrington and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Technically Speaking. Technically Speaking is a monthly program produced by St. Clair County RESA that features the learning opportunities provided to high school students attending the St. Clair County Technical Education Center. We'll show you what is offered and give you the chance to get an in-depth look at the variety of programs of study provided at Tech. We'll also see what students are doing and you'll even have the chance to meet many of the Tech students, the staff, and alumni. In this edition of Technically Speaking, we are looking at the Digital Media Technology Program. This is one of the newer programs offered at Tech. And talk about your hands-on learning opportunities. Students in the Digital Media Technology Program are involved in hands-on activities every day, from running video cameras and audio systems to designing computer graphics and editing videos. Despite the tough economy we're experiencing here in Michigan, the job opportunities in the digital media area are very bright. America's Career Info Net is projecting better than a 15% increase in the number of jobs available for DMT students just here in the state of Michigan over the next six years. And the wages are also expected to be good too. And as technology continues to evolve and influence more and more of our daily lives, this career path has a very bright future. There is a lot to see, so when we come back, we'll meet the instructor from Tech's Digital Media Technology Program, Keely Baraboo. Welcome back to Technically Speaking. We're now in the Digital Media Technology classroom and having the opportunity to get to meet the first year teacher for this program, Keely Baru. Keely, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Like all tech teachers, you need to have a good background before you can begin teaching in the career technical education area. So give us a little bit about your background. Well, I'm from the area. I grew up in Lakeport and graduated from Port Huron Northern and went to the University of Michigan and graduated in film and video studies and went on to work uh, an eight and a half year career in television in California after graduating from uh, U of M and worked for networks like E Entertainment Television, the Style Network, uh, had an internship with The Tonight Show. So there was a lot of different variety of programming and styles of production that I was able to uh, work my way through and um, ended up staying out there, got a master's degree from the University of Southern California and worked in public relations for about five years after that. Um, I came back to this area because I heard that this opportunity to instruct at St. Clair Tech was available and I really still had an affinity for the field of television and production and so I, I thought it sounded like a great way to uh, keep myself in both areas so it's great to be back. What a great skill set that you're able to share with the students as they come through the program. Thank you, yes. Now what, what are some of the skills that the students are learning here in your program? Well, you know, there's a lot of skills beyond just the industry items like, you know, video camera operation or audio production or uh, special effects with different software or different editing uh, tools like Final Cut Pro. Um, they also use industry software for graphic design like Photoshop, Illustrator. But also, there, I, I feel that it's really important they're learning things like leadership. I really emphasize teamwork. I think that's critical and it doesn't really matter what field you're going to go into. That's a really, really, really important skill to hone and develop and be a, be a pro at. So we, we exercise a lot of those things along with the actual tactical um, field specific things that they're learning in the class. I know you've only this is your first year teaching the program, but do you find a lot of the kids are looking to go into some kind of digital media technology career or is it more for hobbies and things that they just like to be able to do on their own? I find most of them have a really strong interest in it and I think that in whatever they do it's eventually going to carry over. I think some of them full time are going to be pursuing um, this industry after they graduate and I think others might do something a little bit related but you know I think most of the people that are coming here really are curious and want to know how do they do that? How do they put that on the screen? How do they, you know, create that type of poster? How do they pull off that special effect? And so I think that that type of curiosity, once you know how to do it, becomes really exciting. And uh, you want to continue being able to practice it. Now, I know that there's a wide variety, you've explained a little bit, wide variety of different skill sets that the students learn. Do they need to master each one of those in the class, or after they get introduced, then they can kind of specialize? They do have to study each of the skills through a certain level of proficiency. And once they've achieved that proficiency, then they're tech certified in that category of job. So um, they get something at the end of the year that gives them a little bit more freedom. It's called a capstone project. And they get to decide which medium they want to express their idea and do their production and creativity. And we had everything from 
um, short films that were documentary style, that were um, uh, mockumentary style, to uh, posters made with Illustrator to um, a, a comic book cover for a potential comic book a student wanted to start. Now, I know one of the unique things that students get to do with your program isn't just in the classroom or just in the studio. They get to go out in the community and do some different videotaping and different things. Share, share a little bit about that. They do, and I think that's one of the most exciting things about this type of class in that we're unique. There isn't really... Um, there isn't really an industry standard certification that you can get that's known nationally or internationally. So it's really important that students are out working and getting absolute resume titles and credits on, you know, that they can present to employers and say, look at I have all of this professional experience being a field producer, being a camera person, being a production assistant, being an audio technician, um, or whatever the case may be for their particular interest. And we've been working a lot with downtown Port Huron and some with the Blue Water Film Festival to try to create those real life um, freelance almost internship opportunities for the students and the more that they take advantage of them they're going to leave tech with a resume that is more impressive than I even had the opportunity to leave college with which I think is really exciting. Now do you have the students create some kind of electronic portfolio of their work too while they're in here? The students in the AM have been working in video and they all created DVD reels for themselves before they left so that they get to take with them all of the production work that they've done and likewise in the afternoon class which is focusing on uh, graphic design right now they're also doing the same thing. Eventually I would like to get it so that it is all available digitally online because I think that that's absolutely where employers in this field are going where they want to see that you can operate solely on a digital basis. And your class has had some success at national and local competitions too, haven't they? We have, yes. We had um, some excellent, excellent students uh, go on to the state competition for Skills USA this year. We had students in the categories of photography, audio broadcasting, video production, and um, job skill demonstration. And they all were fantastic kids and really very talented. And two competitors were partners. Christian McGeechee and Jordan Huffman and they won the audio broadcasting competition at the state level and will be representing the entire state of Michigan as the best in the whole state at nationals for Skills USA in Kansas City. Well we're going to take a little break here and go over to the studio and see some of the different job skills that the students are learning in the DMT program so don't go away we'll meet you over in the studio in just a sec. This is the worst storm I've seen in a long time. I don't know if I'm going to have enough supplies. What am I going to do? They just issued a flood warning. I've got a wife and kids to take care of. How do you plan for something like this? The power went out, and it's just the two of us. If something happens, how will we know what to do? Take the responsibility for the safety of you and your family seriously. Don't wait until after an emergency to prepare. Start today to be ready for 72 hours. Welcome back to Technically Speaking. In this segment of the program, we usually have the opportunity to talk to a couple of students and let them demonstrate what they're learning in the classroom. But because there's so many different jobs that the students are learning in this program, we thought we'd take you around the studio and let you see what it takes to produce a program like Technically Speaking, Dateline Schools, or some of the other shows that we produce here at St. Clair County Risa. One of the first people that uh, is behind the scenes that we're going to meet right now is the camera person. And they're the ones who create all the shots that you see in all of these programs. So let's go see who's behind the camera today. Who's, who do we have today? Hi, my name's Aaron Grebe. I'm a senior at Marine City High School. Aaron, describe a little bit what you're doing behind this camera. Well, uh, as a camera person, it's my job to capture what's going on on set and make sure everyone looks good. And there's a lot of adjustments you have to make as a camera person. You have to do a white balance on your talent using our whiteboard over there to make sure there's not a weird tint, like a yellowish tint to the, um, to the picture. And... The headset I'm wearing is to communicate with the director, and he tells me what to do, like uh, 
when I need to zoom or move the camera, and they tell me when my shot's about to be taken. So that's really how the director gets a little artsy craftsy with having the, each camera person do different types of shots so we're not all seeing the same thing, right? Yeah, it's good to have a lot of variety in your shots because that's what makes it visually interesting okay. to watch. Also notice it looks like you got a pretty big lens. Can you tell us what this is? Well, actually, that's not a lens. That's our teleprompter that we use for our studio productions when we're doing a talk show or something like that where you can't memorize a script. Uh, another little trade secret, right? Yep. All right, great. Another position that we have here in the studio is the floor manager. Good morning. Good morning. And you are? My name is Kim Tomlin. I'm a senior at Marine City High School. So tell us, what, a, what is the role of the floor manager? Well, as a floor manager, what you want to do is try to communicate what the director is saying to you, from, to, you to the, the talent. And how you do that is by this headset that I'm wearing. And through this, you adjust your um, levels for what you hear the director saying. And what you try to do is, if the talent needs to like wrap it up, and because the production is going too long, you just do like hand gestures like this, and you point to them when you want them to start going and talking. The main job is just to communicate and get the talent ready for the shots for the camera people and director. So your job is really kind of like the boss on the set then, isn't it? Yes. Now I notice you know, we have three cameras set up here. Do you get, kind of have to point? Do you walk between the cameras type of thing too, or you just pretty much stay in one spot? Um, for the most part, I stay in one spot, but where I'm at in the studio really depends on where the talent's looking into what camera, because you really want to go wherever the talent can see you so you can communicate to them. Okay, very good. Another important position in the studio is the audio director, because if we can't hear what everybody's saying, we're going to be missing a big part of the show. So who's our audio director today? Uh, my name is Christian McGeechee, and I go to Marine City High School. And audio is a very big part of the production here in the studio, because you need to have the talent sound good at all times. And we do that by first deciding what kind of microphone to use. Like right now, I have a lavalier, which is a clip-on one. Or you can use what you're using right now, which is a handheld, which you can use for many, you know, just to direct and choose which talent you want to go to. Or you can use a boom or a shotgun mic, um, which is on the camera right now, which picks up everything. Now, for this particular job, you don't end once you get the talent mic'd up. You also have other duties back in the production studio, too, right? Right. You got to keep, uh, make sure they're, they're sounding good, the audio's good, um, they're not over-modulated, because you got to make the talent sound good. Okay, very good. Also on our set today, we have a couple of young ladies who are filling in as talent as we're getting everything set up in here in the studio. So tell us what you're doing in this role. I'm Cheyenne Niffin, and I go to Marine City High School, and currently I am the talent. And so as you're sitting in, as we're getting ready, tell us why it's important to have someone sitting in the chair before the actual talent gets here. It's always important to be prepared and be here because you need to make sure that you look good, and the people on camera will tell you if you need to fix your hair or to do this with your shirt or whatever. And then it's always important to white balance, and of course there's audio where he needs to check your mic and make sure that you sound good. All right. Also joining us as talent today is? I'm Brittany Turner. I am a senior at Port Huron High School. Okay, Brittany, we've also talked about the, uh, the audio. We also talked about getting the shots right. But I look up above, there's an awful lot of lights up here in the ceiling that you wouldn't normally see. Tell us about the importance of that. Lighting is very important because you could have a lot of shadows that shouldn't be in the shot. They could be out of place. Um, and they also get too hot. And also, I imagine with people like me, it creates some challenges too, doesn't it? I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, what, what, out of the jobs we've already talked about here in the studio, what's your favorite job? The camera. Uh, working behind the camera. And, I mean, because you could, I guess, work however you want to. I mean, that's my favorite job. That's probably an easy way for you to express your creativity too, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Well, we've seen a lot of jobs in the studio already, but that isn't where all the jobs end. We need to go down to the production studio and take a look and see who some of the jobs are behind the scenes. So come on with me. Here we are in the production studio, and as you can see, we can overlook the whole studio and see what's going on. But this is really where everything comes together for any kind of video production. So joining me is the director of the program today. Hi, uh, my name is Jordan Hoffman. I'm a senior at St. Clair High School. And Jordan, tell us a little bit, what is the role of the director? Uh, well, the role of the director is really to make sure the shoot goes on as scheduled. Uh, I control our uh, talent, our floor manager, 
our camera people, our audio, our lighting. Uh, basically, everything comes down to uh, the director's final call. So I really got to be on top of my game to make sure that everything looks right for network standards. Looks like you've got a lot of high-tech equipment here uh, that you're able to work with and, and utilize to make this a good broadcast. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, well, in front of me is our switcher board that uh, I switch between all of our cameras, um, our graphics, our uh, C uh, CG. Uh, right here we have our green screen control uh, and our graphics control. That's our lighting. Um, and then there is our t all of our tape decks to record, uh, to throw up our B-roll footage, which is like overlaid video. Uh, now, generally with uh, larger production houses and bigger productions, you'll have more people back here working with you, and then you just call the shots. But today, you get to be the jack of all trades. Uh, yeah, um, with our bigger shoots, uh, sometimes we'll have like eight cameras or something. We'll need just a, ten a technical director to uh, just push buttons, and they basically will listen to the director, uh, which would be me today. Just um, I tell them what to do. They're, I'm the eyes, and they're the hands. Uh, it's really too much just for one person, so it takes two people. And this isn't all the staff that's involved with the video production. There's also the post-production part of it. So let's go back over to the classroom and take a look at what's all involved in the post-production part of the process. We're now back in the DMT classroom where the post-production activities go on for any production that is done in the studio. And we have someone here working on our broadcast now. Who's with us today? I'm Ashley Caswell and I go to Marine City High School. Okay, Ashley, here we are doing some post-production, so tell us some of the software and some of the things you need to do to complete the whole project in the post-production phase. Well, some of the programs we use is Final Cut Pro, and then we have After Effects, and you can just create a lot of really nifty effects, like, it's just really awesome, like, being able to do stuff like this at a high school level. This is uh, probably one of the areas in video production where you can really be creative, isn't it? Oh, yes. I, this is my favorite part because you, like, you can just let your imagination go wild and do anything you want because like, anything on here, anything's possible with this program. Does uh, post-production take quite a bit of time for any video production? Sometimes it does if you don't have it planned out, but if you have a pretty straightforward idea of what you want, it goes pretty smoothly unless programs quit or you need to reshoot something. And what do you find is the most challenging part of the post-production phase? The most challenging part is sometimes your clips, they don't work properly or like equipment malfunction, like let's say you're filming and then turns out you weren't really filming because it didn't record and you have to go back and re-record everything and then sometimes it just gets really tedious because you're trying to match things up and it doesn't work. You just got to take a step back and calm down. But this is the place where everything all comes together to a final product. Yes, and at the end, most of our projects look really clean and awesome. Great. One of the other things that they do in the Digital Media Technology Program is a lot of graphic design. So let's go over and take a look and see what they need to do in the graphic design part of DMT. Another aspect of the DMT program is graphic design, and joining me now is Valerie Shaman. Valerie, what school do you go to? I go to St. Clair High School. So Valerie, tell us a little bit about what you do with the graphic design part of DMT. Well, in DMT, we practice mostly on Photoshop, and once you get the hang of it, it's easy to learn, and you can just let go of all your creativity and just express it in whatever you want and create whatever you want. Do you have to have a little bit of an artist flair or is it just uh, allowing those juices yeah, go as with me? Some ideas. Um, it just find some inspiration and you can make something crazy. Mm -hmm. So, so tell, show me a little bit of uh, some of the things that you've been able to create in this class. Well, I'm a big photography buff and I took a picture of my friend here and I added a background and she was actually in front of a or there's a black background behind her okay. and I added people behind her and so made it look real and then I made an album cover like an 80s okay. theme mm -hmm. and it's best if you like if you're into photography you can edit your photos and make them look amazing like this is a picture I have taken and edited in Photoshop so now, as part of the class, too, you do get to learn how to do digital photography, right? Right. They teach you everything you want to know about um, photography, and we have a great selection of cameras, Nikons, and Canons, and Lum or Lumix, and so many different things. And they teach you how to 
everything, everything about them you can learn. It doesn't even, you don't even have to know anything about photography. Just come in, they teach you everything. Did you know much about Photoshop and the technical part of things that you're doing before you began this class? I didn't at all. I didn't know one thing about Photoshop, but I really wanted to learn. So I just came in and they taught me everything I wanted to know and I'm a pro now. <laughs> what, what do you hope to do with the skills you've learned here? I hope to create things and maybe make some money. <laughs> there you go. There you go. DMT program is one of the newer programs here at uh, St. Clair Tech. So when we come back, we're going to have the opportunity to meet one of the students who was in the early part of the program. So don't go away. It can be a little awkward when your friend tells you he's been diagnosed with a mental illness. But what's even more awkward is, if you're not there for him, he's less likely to recover. I'm here to help, man, whatever it takes. Thanks. You believe this guy? Trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pass the honey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to Technically Speak, and another one of my favorite parts of the program is when we get to meet some of the alumni who have attended classes here at Tech. And today, joining me now from the Digital Media Technology Program is Megan McEntee. And Megan, welcome to the program. It's great to be here. So now that you graduated from the DMT program a few years ago, what are you, what are you doing today? Well, right now I'm uh, attending Columbia College in Chicago. I've been there since I graduated, and I'm studying television, um, concentrating on post-production and effects. Okay. How, how did your time at uh, the DMT program here at Tech help prepare you for what you're doing today? Well, I really can't say enough about the program here at uh, Tech. I came here when I was a junior and um, I basically got an introduction into everything related to television production and radio as well as some web design and everything like that and it really helped me focus on what I like doing and um, gave me some great knowledge to take with me when I went to Columbia after that and I really felt like I had a step up um, in terms of what I knew or my background on certain things that really helped me. Now do a lot of the students that you have uh, in your program, do they have a similar type of background or is this kind of unique? In some ways it's really unique because uh, I don't think as many people um, have that uh, have that type of background where in high school they kind of got into all this. Some did have like a television production type class, but um, when you think about tech, you're here for three hours out of the day, and you really get to get into some of the things like some of the software or you know in the studio working with everything like that. Um, and I don't think a lot of kids got that. Are there? Uh specific types of programs that you're working on over there like you do here you do a lot of project things do the same type of thing there at Columbia sure yeah um, I've taken you know you kinda have to start over regardless to kinda level the playing field mm -hmm. so I had to take an introduction like a television production class and I was able to take a lot of what I learned here and apply it I mean sure you're gonna learn more and it's um they get into you know more extensive things but I really felt like I had a leg up um, in terms of what um, what I learned here or the experiences I had here in terms of um, you know practicing with projects uh, like I can remember we did like a music video project or we did uh, you know Skills USA mm -hmm. and things like that and just having that type of experience uh, was incredible to take with me when we talked to the instructor Keely Baraboo a little earlier in the program, one of the keys she, she mentioned is not just teaching the students specific skills related to TV production 
and digital media, but the teamwork and that cooperative spirit that you need to have. Do you find that that's uh, really important for what you're doing today, too? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, like I said, the, you know, the first class I took in the television department um, when I went to Columbia, it was a studio class. And <laughs> you're working with people, um, you're taking turns uh, going through each job and working with everyone to make a whole production happen. And that's exactly what I did here. Um, when we were working the studio for, you know, we took a few weeks to just learn the studio and everything like that, and it's the exact same routine, actually. You know, we would go through and go to each different position, and everyone would keep learning. And, you know, and the next time when someone hadn't done something before but you had, you know, you're kind of teaching them how to do it, and they're learning from you, and you're learning from them. And it's a really great environment. What were some of the favorite things you did while you were here in the DMT class? Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, I had a lot of fun with, the different projects that we did and and we had a lot of fun helping each other out with the different projects um, there were you know like the music video project I comes to mind or uh, the radio projects that we used to do here uh, I, I don't know if we still do the same projects or not but and and I have to say skills USA was really fun that we took from the classroom and went out and kind of worked together on that that was a lot of fun but everything comes back to you know working together to learn uh, the different things um, that you learn here and also just being able to experience that we're just you know it was just such a great experience what are some of from your experience here at Tech and the DMT program and what you're going through at Columbia, what are, what are some of your career goals now? Well, really what I want to end up doing is working for like a post-production house, uh, hopefully somewhere in Chicago maybe. You know, I'll go wherever the work is, of course. <laughs> sure. But, um, and I, I was able to, when I first came here, really get experience with the types of software or types of programs that you might use out there in the real world. You know, when I first came here, we were First of all, we didn't have um, any of the Macs. When I first came here to kind of take a look at the program, it was all PCs and they were all using Adobe Premiere. Um, and then eventually we started going over to the Macs and we started using Final Cut. And I had a lot of experience with Final Cut that I don't think a lot of students had mm -hmm. when they first came um, to college or you know to the program. And so I was able to use that to kind of help help myself out in, in getting through the projects because that's a huge step so eventually after I graduate I'd like to use you know the knowledge that I first learned here and learn more extensively um, as I went through and kind of become an editor uh, at at anything like I said uh, some type of post production sure. house if a parent came up to you and said why should my son or daughter come to tech and specifically the digital media technology program what would you tell them well, one of the things I think is great about tech and why I had such a good experience here is that you really get to focus on what you like to do. And um, like any program at tech, you know, people are coming here and they get to try out new things and see if they really like it. And you might get lucky and find out that you really do love it. And so then you can go on from that. And if that's the case, then you know you can you can pretty much do anything with it. Um, and so the DMT program I think was really great for me because. I had some experience, you know, when you're a kid and uh, used to play with my video camera and, you know, make little movies and whatever, but you're not going to know unless you really get that experience, and tech allows you to do that. Okay, great. Well, Megan, we want to thank you for being part of the show today, and we wish you all the best with your goals there at Columbia and Chicago. Thank you. And if you'd like to learn more about the Digital Media Technology Program here at Tech, be sure to visit our website at sctech.org. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Technically Speaking as we celebrate 35 years of St. Clair Tech. We hope you've enjoyed this look into the Digital Media Technology Program and we'd like to thank the instructor Keely Baraboo and her students. And don't forget to check out St. Clair Tech's website at sctech.org. We hope to see you next time on Technically Speaking.